Hello everybody and welcome back to LMM and if you're enjoying what you're seeing on the channel at the moment how about giving this video a like and maybe subscribe to the channel to help us grow and perhaps even check out our Patreon. Today we're going to go and find an abandoned steam locomotive. There is one slight problem with that. It's right up there. So it's time to get the bags and go for a walk and this is going to be exciting because I am a fat boy. Specifically, I am a fat boy who doesn't do nearly enough exercise, so this was going to be a challenge. And once I'd got my bearings, I could begin my assault up the gradient. And I don't think you appreciate how steep this was. Even the residential areas were silly. But, but this, this doesn't feel right. That's the horizon for level. And that's how the cars are parked. But what, they're aligned here in part, it would just fall over. And we're going up that. If this is how steep the roads are, I hate to think how bad the footpath is going to be. And it didn't take too long before we found the start of aforementioned footpath. <laughs> yeah. Danger. Danger awaits. Now, some might be put off by the sign saying danger, but the footpath was just so pretty. And what danger could there possibly be climbing up the side of a mountain? It, probably the bits like this, thinking about it. What an incredible view. Uh, oh, bits of metal from the previous year, some flowers, foxgloves, I think. Look at them. Now that's um, how high we've come already. And this is the footpath, which is scary because this is at the top of a, of a spoil heap. I can see the car. How you doing? Fine. So far. So here we find the first bit of our railway heritage, and it's unusual. These old bits of rail have been hammered in here to be, well, markers and grab rails along the side of this path, and the drop down there is frankly horrific and we have a wall up here which i think there should be a road on it which we have to go that way on because we might be on the right path i don't know but nice to know railway heritage so the engine that we're going to go see may have once upon a time worked on these rails probably not because they're all the way up there but it's a nice thing to think of and with our little archaeological interlude completed i continue to walk up the hill where i was going to meet a road which i'd have to cross to carry on the footpath however there wasn't a road when we got to the top so I decided the best thing I could do would be to put the drone up to get my bearings. And this rather excitingly revealed our first look at the remains of some of the workings that used to crisscross this mountain. And frankly, I wasn't really prepared for the sheer scale of A, what was there originally, and B, just how much of it remained, and the sheer engineering challenge to have made all of this in the first place. There was the remains of what appeared to be a loader. Originally, the workings had gone down to the sea, but this appeared to be some way that road vehicles could be loaded with whatever had been removed from the mountain. However, this was certainly not the right place, and following a quick flight with a drone, I worked out that we'd turned right when we should have turned left. And so we went back to start walking up the correct path and came across this. Now, I think apparently it's what I've read. This is what's left of an old quarryman's path. So the guys who are working up there, living down here, would have to walk up this path. And this path isn't in the best of health because the footpath runs through here where there has been a landslip. So we now have to circumnavigate the landslip find some good footing and hope for the best. Oh, what, what a view. Laurie, mm -hmm. when you said a road, I envisioned one of higher quality and uh, not a quarry. Sorry, I mean, we are in a quarry. The good news is the footpath goes up there. You see that very obviously heavily used path. I love the tarmac it's got on it. High quality. Yeah, it's good. Oh, it's good. There were many friendly signs along the way that reassured us that we were on the right track. And every time we got to a clearing, we saw remnants of the area's industrial past. There, you can just see the stones on the side. And that's the an incline that we're all, the remains of an incline that worked all the way up there. There's a little building up there too. 
In fact, there are the remains of buildings hidden in quite a few places, including this being held up with what looks like scaffolding poles. I think this was something to do with water pipes, but I don't know. Graceful like a mountain goat. Don't know which mountain goats you've seen. The footpath was of a dubious quality, and for the two lads from the flat bits of the east coast, quite challenging, reducing Charles to all fours at some points, as it was quite slippery underfoot. It was also not particularly well marked. I'm fairly sure this is the path going up there, because there's what? Oh look, look there, there's a, there's a footpath sign on the side. Why is it there? There's nothing there. Hey, it's just the path that goes that way. I'm gonna get hit by a truck. This is a busy quarry, mate. Ooh, what's that? Look, there's a building up ahead. What is that? So we found something up here. So the path has got a diversion now because whatever this... I think this was the power station. There was a, there was a power supply building that was up here and apparently you do... Well, oh my God, that's the footpath going up there. But apparently we do walk past the remains of the power building. I suppose this is it. Oh, what? yes it is. Come on, look at this. Check out the old switchboards in there, the fuse boards. something next door which I can't quite see I don't want to go inside what is all what? oh wow look at this it is the power area look these are all the, the wires and the um, ceramic insulators look at all that up there so this was the powerhouse We're doing urban exploration. I've always said we'd never do this. It's a bit, a bit hurt. Just, just to give you an idea of this as well, that's the horizon from my height, and you cannot see Charles. <laughs> Bye, Charles. Oh, the steps here, you'll be alright. And that's the end of the tree line, then we're out the tree line. It's going to be an amazing view in a second. Danger, quarry face, keep out. I'm sure it can't be that, oh dear. Yep, yep, yeah, that's definitely the edge. Let's go up here then. Oh, look, there's, there's stuff up there. Just see beyond that tree, there's another, I think a winding house. The view from the clearing was pretty spectacular with snippets of the old mining operations and its modern replacement on show. So we paused to catch our breath. I love a view. And to see how far we'd come. We were down there. So here we have the first of the notable ruins on the way, which I think is one of the old, I'm actually not sure what this is. I did know, and I forgot on the walk. But let's go and have a bit closer because it's the first of the proper old things here, uh, approaching the top of a mountain. Oh, look at that. This is what we believe used to be a winding house. And we see up there, there are presumably what used to take wires. Perhaps this was even electricity or electrical driven. And we believe possibly part of this in there was the winding house. Apparatus. We don't really know, but it's an amazing thing to have on the side of a mountain. And a day like today, it is beautiful. It is blue skies, it is temperate, and it is lovely. Overlooking an absolutely beautiful crystal blue sea, which blends into the sky over there, over Anglesey. But it makes you think, on a cold, wet, grey day with a storm blowing in off the sea, this must have been absolutely horrific. I was amazed at just how well this building had survived from its location on the side of a mountain overlooking the sea. And when you're stopped on a mountainside overlooking the sea, there's just one thing to do, and that is to launch the drone. And suddenly the whole landscape was laid out before us and it gave some perspective onto just how far we'd climbed. 
It also gave us the opportunity to scout the area and discover a few more of the old buildings that litter the mountainside. This particular winding house survives in remarkably good condition. You can see the drum itself is still in situ inside the windings and the roof itself is only now starting to fall apart. It's amazing how these buildings have just managed to survive in such incredible condition. What's more amazing is the view that they have from their sitting and to think that the people who were working here would have never really appreciated that view. Having found no steam engines this way, I turned the drone and headed towards the coast and discovered more workings and more buildings. Having never actually visited a disused quarry before, I was amazed at the variety and number of structures that have been installed on the side of a mountain. And as we continued to explore with the drone, we found some which truly looked properly dilapidated. And I think that these were actually some of the more modern buildings. And as I panned over here with the drone, we caught sight of our first proper railway bit. Here, there is a disused wagon, amazingly still intact as it's built from wood. And up here, this looks like a workshop of some variety as well, which is probably related. And as I flew up over one of the inclines, I gained enough height to look over the edge of the quarry itself. I was not prepared for the sheer scale of this and the fact that they are quite literally hollowing out the inside of a mountain starting from the top and working down. The sheer scale was just amazing. And to think that that is still working with all of these old buildings being left to ruin. And in the distance, you can see the modern quarry equipment that's all been moved up here rather than being down on the ground. However, we still hadn't actually got any closer to finding where the locomotive was. So I brought the drone back to me and Charles and had one last look at the structure that we were stood by. You can see where the winding drum once was and the incline going down the side there. And it gives a clear indication of how this once would have worked. However, it was time for us to move on. But before we continue to climb up the side of the mountain, I found something interesting. So there's a, a hobbit hole that goes in the side there. I'm, I don't know if that was an entrance or what that is, or a water drain, don't know. But where we are now, this, I think, is an old track bed, because it's all level. From over there, it kind of works its way around here. So it's obviously been engineered, and would make sense that this was a railway. <laughs> and I've just seen the sign there that tells us the footpath goes up there, because we need to get the other side of the quarry there, which means we need to go up, walk all the way around, which is a bad idea. So, onwards and upwards. What is that? I am not going in there, but that, that, goes, that goes that way. As we continued our climb, we came out on another plateau, which we were sure at one point would have had a railway on it. And then we came across the most amazing track with an outstanding view. Holy moly, what is, is that the sea? This is phenomenal. This was hands down the best footpath that I had ever walked along. And where it led was somewhere even more incredible. Allow me to introduce you to the north side of the mountain, which houses the greatest number of ruins from the old mining days. Each one of these plateaus would have had its own railway network on it for moving wagons with quarried products and other equipment around. It must have been an absolute hive of activity back in the day when this was working. And so many buildings are still standing overlooking the sea, like this presumably workshop with the beam so things could be swung out from it. And excitingly for us, it wasn't just the remains of buildings. Remains, some old wagons, two big edge ones, the buff beams. Soon the wheel sets are long gone under there, but that's what's left of them. There was also either a wagon turntable or maybe a way station and some bad news, which was this sign. This was the end of the footpath. And no wonder, because to go any further, you'd have to climb down this incline, which is strongly not recommended. From our vantage point right at the top though, you could see this little engine just outside its shed. And as we were going to obey the sign and not risk ourselves and others by climbing down the steep incline, there was one thing to do, and that was to launch the drone over this frankly amazing landscape and go and have a closer look 
at this abandoned steam locomotive which sits on the edge of the world. This plateau was a shunting area bringing wagons from one incline to the other one over there and there's something poetic about having an engine sat in the very place it used to work outside the very shed that once used to house it. These are the mortar remains of a truly abandoned locomotive. This is a D. Winton vertical boiler three foot gauge locomotive that was built in 1878 and named after the quarry that it worked in. This is Penn Mine and it worked on this plateau shunting wagons all the way up to 1943 and when the quarry closed she was deemed too big and difficult to bring down on the inclines and so was simply left here to rot. She is a truly abandoned steam locomotive with a very uncertain future. She sits outside her shed. You can see the water tank here, which would have once filled her tanks with clean water, slowly rotting away as well. She was at one point stored in the shed, but when that started to fall down, a group of volunteers came up and dragged her into the open air to stop her from being crushed as the roof came down around her, which means that this is her final resting place sat just outside her shed. Today, she is nothing more than a set of frames and the outer wrapper of a boiler. All of her key components, bar the crank axle, have been taken away to go onto other projects or even new build engines. It's really sad to think that when this engine was abandoned in the early 40s, she was a complete working locomotive. And it's not the weather and time that's made it like this. It's people coming and pillaging parts. You can see down the barrel, there's the remains of a tube plate, but most of it has gone. Even the axle boxes have been robbed. As you can see, the rear driving wheels have moved out of position with the frames now just resting on the axles. It's amazing what does remain though. What survived the weather are the wooden buffer blocks and you can just make out her name and the date she was built scrawled onto the frames. This place is an amazing time capsule, a place frozen completely still in time where work just stopped and everything was left in situ. The locomotive, the buildings, the shed, all just left and abandoned. And it's easy to forget on a day like this how unpleasant it would have been working here in the middle of winter when the storms came in and the biting cold came around. Flying the drone in a still day was hard enough with the wind buffering it, so imagine it in the middle of the winter. And when I say that this shed is on the edge of the world, I really do mean it, because I don't know anywhere else where the world just falls away like this next door to a railway shed. It is simply just awe-inspiring. By this point, my drone's battery was starting to get tired, and I figured that I wouldn't have the opportunity to have another look around, so I flew through the remains of one of the winding houses and looked over the inclines that crisscrossed their way down the side of this mountain. It is incredible the amount of work that went into it. What was also interesting was that big light area was where we had come out at the start of the video. We'd been so close to the engine and never even realised. There have been talks of preservation, and there have even been mentions of getting the army to fly a chinokin to pull this out. But so far, it's not happened, and maybe it would be criminal to pull it away from its home after all these years. However, my battery was now running out, and it was time for us to turn around and head home. So I hope you've enjoyed finding this truly abandoned icon left on the side of a mountain. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time. Ta-ra!